Paul Bazaar with 38 TV and uh, today we've got a new show it's called cooking in the kitchen with Stephanie and I'm with Stephanie Myers and guess what Stephanie is a local chef she does private classes and private parties for you but you can tell me better than what what I'm saying so uh, yeah I do get into it. yeah I do uh, lessons for kids for adults I do dinner parties I do instructional dinner parties where you can invite a bunch of your friends over drink some wine and I'll teach you how to cook something you don't know how to cook Okay, so now you go to you go to the person's home as well, yes, right? Yes, correct. That's awesome. All right, so listen, we're gonna we're gonna show you how to cook something today. We think, and uh, Stephanie brought some stuff along, but uh, I only recognize some of these things. So, what are we cooking today? So today we're going to cook some fresh, locally caught mahi mahi. It was actually just swimming around this morning. All right, um, so dolphin actually. It's dolphin. The fish. It's dolphin fish. It's the the fish that swims how do, how do this way. Not this way. This is a mammal. They're tail fin. Yeah. This is a fish. So mahi mahi is a made up name for dolphin. So, but but that's what you're gonna look for now. You picked up a, this up at your local fishmongers. I did. I got it from Cool Fish in Niceville. Um, but uh, what you want to do is you want to find a fishmonger who uh, where you can find the freshest things. Um, you can always tell a fresh fish um, by the pink, fresh. Yeah. Let's take a look at it. All right. Let's bring it out here. What's up? It's, it's probably not going to talk back much today. <laughs> well, we, we like it that way, don't we? Yeah. See, that's beautifully shiny, right? Yes. I mean, so it's, it's coming it's right pink. off the light there. It, it, it looks appetizing. If you go to um, a fish market and you see like the edges are starting to brown or it's drying or it doesn't have that like fresh pink look to it, then it's probably not too fresh. Um, if you can get it whole, it's the best way. Um, you want to look for clear eyes and that the scales aren't uh, mangled with their kind of uniform. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, please. Okay. So first I'm going to make us a filet. Um, when they come in, this is a whole entire filet mm -hmm. on one side of the fish. And so I'm just going to cut off just a, just a little bit that we need here. Um, and when you go to the fishmonger, they will take out all the pin bones, yeah. they will skin it for you, scale it for you, everything. And make sure to tip your guys because they're always going to, next time you go into that store, they're going to remember you and uh, make sure you always get the freshest stuff no matter what. Because obviously, they're trying to sell stuff too, so. Yeah, and you know, everybody's trying to save a couple pennies here and there. But, uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just put some salt on it and let it sit for a few minutes while we get what's called a dredge. Oh, I like that. I like dredging. Yeah, it adds, the dredging will add flavor mm -hmm. and it will add uh, a little bit of texture to the fish. So what are we, uh, what are we dredging it in? Let's see, we're going to dredge it. Let's see here. And what's those other ingredients we got? We got some asparagus. We got, we're going right? to, we're going to saute some asparagus to, asparagus to go with the fish and then we're right. going to make, um, I've got some basmati rice already cooking. Oh, nice. So this is something that really is, you know, obviously we're taking a little bit longer today because we're showing you how to how to do this, at least Stephanie is, because I'm not. But, uh, so so normally uh, something like this would, wouldn't take very long to cook, you know. It's, so don't worry about that whole thing about coming home from work and, oh, I've got to, you know, spend uh, two hours in the kitchen or whatever, especially with a fish dish like this, you know. Yeah, and it's, fish is something that everyone is scared to cook because it can it can be really easily messed up. But if you're just, my main thing is that low and slow and you'll get right. the fish just perfect. Yeah, definitely. So all I'm doing here is I've got some all-purpose flour and I'm going to add some Old Bay seasoning here. Yum. And this is just going to be a dredge. We're mm -hmm. not going to batter the fish. Um, right. A dredge is just on the outside of the fish where you gotcha. just going to add a little bit of flavor to it. Gotcha. It's kind of like a little bit of a thin crust. Yeah, it's going to be like a thin no. crust without the battering. A battering would have sure. eggs in it. So now when you're you're cooking, it's a little bit of uh, some of the instructional things you normally look at is the timing on, on cooking something. So if something's going to take longer than the other, you would kind of start it first. Correct. And that's one of the hardest things to learn is timing. Um, my first lesson in timing was when I was a kid. My mom let me help make her uh, pancakes and bacon. Mm -hmm. She always say we can't get the pancakes started first. <laughs> we got to get the bacon started. Right, right, right. So that it all comes out at the same time. Now, were you one of those girls that woke up in the morning and decided to to make breakfast? You know, with unattended. 
to where it's like oh, yeah. I started Mother's Day and all that stuff. Oh, I was I was the cook in the house growing up. Uh -huh. Ever since I was about 10, I cooked almost all meals for my family. I was raised with a single mother. Uh -huh. So I took on the cooking duties and... Gotcha. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, so all I did was I just went around and made sure that all the bits are covered, as you can see. Looks perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get... Let's get our fire going here. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'm going to put it on about medium. Okay. And now obviously that would be a little bit different if we're using an electric yes. stove. Yes. We love, we love to cook with gas, so that's the first thing that gets turned on right there, isn't it? <laughs> Always. <laughs> and then let's see. While we're waiting for that to heat up. Yeah. I'm going to show you how to do Give me something to do. Some lemons. Good lemons? And yeah, that's a good tip right there. So you turned up, you just turned over the. Well, you explain it. Yeah, I turned over the, for? the cutting board because I don't want the raw uh, fish to the be raw on. The raw fish to, to be on here. Yeah, there you go. And that saves you walk, walking off to have to wash something and then bring it back. You know. Yeah. Now, turn it over. Yeah, exactly. So um, the best way to get the most juice out of a lemon is to give it a roll like so. Look at that. And it's gonna release all the juices. Mm hmm So that whenever you cut it. Beautiful. Now something we learned recently that uh, myself and my wife have been doing is freezing the lemons. And it's really good for zesting, so you can pull that thing out. And oh, yeah. And it, it, it zests a lot easier because it's a bit more frozen. Of course, it lasts forever in the, in the frigid air, in the freezer, and you can still unfreeze it and it's fine. Awesome. So, okay, anyway. A little there. Well, certainly. And then all you want to do is cut a few of these in half, and then we're just going to squeeze them. Well, you want to give me something to do? One, I'm trying to put this down without There you go. Got it going. Okay, so that's a that's a cool way to to get keep the pips out of your uh, out of seeds, your yes. seeds, seeds. What do we call those? Yeah, <laughs> all those things. All right. So if you don't have a little sieve like this, you can actually squeeze it in your hand like that, and the, mm -hmm. and the seeds will probably stay in your hand. Yeah, and you just kind of let it. This is this is that messy. Okay. So if you <laughs> want to go ahead and do three of those. Absolutely. Them. Well, sure. And I'm going to get started. Absolutely. I didn't know I was left-handed. <laughs> you become ambidextrous in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to get enough oil in this pan just to kind of coat the bottom of it. And when oil is cooler, it mm -hmm. moves very slow. The hotter it gets, it moves around almost like water in the pan. Yeah, for sure. And you can definitely tell when it's ready because it just sheets across the pan. Like oh, you're liquid? not looking for smoke or anything? No, you point. definitely don't want any smoke. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I can smell the oil starting oh, to cook. I wish this was smell-o-vision. I know, it's so, it would be awesome. Oh yeah, see there's that noise you're looking for. Yeah, it's just, you don't want like a, like when you're searing a snake, a steak. A snake. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Around here, right? When you're searing a steak, you want a really loud sizzle when you hit yeah, the pan. Yeah. With fish, like I said, it's going to be low and gentle. slow. Mm -hmm. But you, and you can always test it. You know, the heat of it. I put something in there, or a little scrap of fish in there. Throw it in to see what the go by the uh, noise that it makes when you put it in there. Mm -hmm. All right, listen. We're going to take a short break, uh, and uh, you're going to watch a couple of friends of ours, and uh, we're going to be back right in a couple of seconds. So stick around for In the Kitchen with Stephanie on 38 TV. Thanks. Bonjour. My name is Olivier Bonneau, owner of the St. George Inn on St. George Island, Florida. The St. George Inn is unique, a bit quirky, with an immense charm with 19 rooms and suites, all different, and all are one block from the beach and one block from the bay. What else are you waiting for? Call now, 850-927-2903, or visit us at stgeorgian.com. People from all walks of life are tuning into 30A Television. Maybe they're just brushing up on some food and wine. Others just want to jam with the local musicians. 
Or is it a furry friend fix they're looking for? One thing's for sure, there's never a dull moment on 30A TV. Everyone needs to experience waking up on 30A at least once, and the 30A television crew's here to keep you up to date on the ins and outs of our little slice of paradise. Watch 30A TV on cable, Roku, Facebook, and at www.30a.tv. on each side um, and it'll cook it all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, this is a fish spatula as you can see. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's bendy. It's bendy so that you can, like that. So that you can be very gentle with your fish. Look at that. I got it. Thank you. Thank you, little helper. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're going to set this here. Yum. And then in here we've got a little bit of Oh yeah. After yummy. juice. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do that lemon juice. thing. Mm -hmm. All right, we're taking that off the heat for a minute. Yeah. Oh, the smell of that is wonderful. Yeah. Get rid of that. We're gonna add some capers. Now, capers uh -huh. are really cool. Yeah. They're a great way to add salt, mm -hmm. and they are super for healthy you. for you. Yeah. They have anti antioxidants in them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what they are is actually they're little unripe or unblossomed buds oh. from a rose family. So they're like little tiny roses that haven't been opened up yet. How cute. So that's still on a medium heat? Yep, that's still on a medium heat. Okay. Um, what we want to do is kind of get all that yumminess that was left over from the fish mm -hmm. um, into the sauce. Yeah, totally. And then we're going to add just a little bit of seasoning. I put a little bit of a pinch of salt and a pinch mm -hmm. of pepper. Lovely. That's essential for everything you cook with. <laughs> totally. Brings it all together. Yep. And we're just going to let that cook down just a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. going to lower the temperature just so it doesn't cook down too much. All right. Or set off the fire alarm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that. So All right, cool. next we're going to um, sear the asparagus. All right. Um, and so the asparagus, I've already done a little bit of prep to it. Yeah. Um, what I've done is I snapped off the bottom pieces. You right. just take them like this, snap them off. Yeah, you don't cut them. You no. can, but I mean, what, what, so. The reason why you snap I love that part of it. Yeah, me and too. And um, thank you, thank you for teaching me that. Because <laughs> it. They will bend in a natural breaking spot because you don't want the bottom that's very fibrous, right? Right, and so we're, where, if you hold it like this, where it breaks is where the dry meets the moist. Right. You don't want to eat that dry, woody part. Yeah, so that's what it's like, it's wood. Yeah. So you're better, rather than cutting the end of your asparagus because they're at different lengths, right? Yeah, and you know, it's you're not trying to go for a restaurant quality, so it's not like you have to have them all at the same length. Well, I don't know about your house, but our house is always a challenge <laughs> every time we cook. And that's the thing too, is I want to teach people how to cook things that are very yummy and exciting, yeah. but are simple and easy for everyone to do. I have olive oil already in there, just regular olive oil. Um, you don't want to use extra virgin olive oil because the smoking point on olive oil is really low. Lower. So it will, things will burn. Yeah, it's kind of meant for salads and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Dressing more than yeah. anything, or maybe something with Extra bread. virgin olive oil is definitely for not yeah. cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For salads that you don't cook. And for sure. Now, um, the coconut oil is pretty popular these days. Do you use that at all? Um, I'm not a, I mean, I'm not against it, but it's, I was French top, French so tots, butter and oh. cream. <laughs> there you go. So, this is starting to bubble here, and it's nice and loud. A girl after my own heart. Yeah. So we're gonna lay those in there. After it gets nice and hot. Put some salsa and pepper. Salt and pepper. You brought spoons for everybody, that's awesome. Yeah, those are tasting spoons when you're cooking. Oh, of course. Everything. Right, right. We did that during the break, just so you know. <laughs> so this is, you can see, this is getting nice and thick. It's not so liquidy anymore, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna turn off the heat. Uh-huh. I'm gonna give it just a minute. These guys are looking great. And They're all getting friendly in there. Yeah. And what we're doing is, whenever you cook things, mm -hmm. you bring out the flavor in them. Yeah. Um, food has the most flavor right before it burns. Yeah, there you go. You know, so if you can get 
that part Most of people it cook with much higher heat than they should, right? Right, and that's the oh. thing is, is good cooking takes um, a little bit of time. A little bit of time and patience. Patience yeah. is the biggest thing. Yeah, hurry up. You can't already. just yeah crank everything up and right. go. No, I'm pretty guilty of that too. You know, it's like just like crank it on my hand. <laughs> but you should. So. Right. Correct. All right. So I'm gonna put. You want that butter melt all the way in there? Mm -hmm. Move around and get all that yumminess that's on the bottom of that pan. We'll check our asparagus. Yeah. Starting to look good. Asparagus are looking nice and healthy. Okay, so the asparagus, what I did with it was um, I blanched and chopped it, mm -hmm. meaning that I got a pot of boiling water, waited till it had a full rolling boil, yep. and added salt. Mm -hmm. You want it salty as it Yeah. And then you put in your asparagus for two minutes, mm -hmm. take it out and put it in ice water so it stops cooking, and that's your prep. That's where it was right. whenever I brought it in. Yeah, right? yeah. So the only good thing about asparagus is that they're pretty much a uniform size, so you know what you're getting. So when you're when you're actually having to cut something that's not shaped like an asparagus, you know, like a sweet potato or something like that, you want to make sure that you have the uh, sizes of the pieces that you're cooking to be fairly fairly uniform size, so they'll cook all at the same time. If you have a big lump of something in there along with something smaller, and obviously they're going to cook at different times. So. So if you would like, that's my tip of the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> I only have one, so that's how that works. Well, wait, we got that out of the so way. What are we gonna do now? We're gonna, so now we're, we're going to play to, it. Yeah, we're gonna. Do well, let's get stuff out of the way. I think I can help a little bit. Just throw it in the floor. We don't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Right here, right? I don't know. <laughs> we're not here yet. <laughs> so do you want to go ahead and put a pickle? We're gonna put rice? that right here, right? Yeah, perfect. Oh yeah, the rice. Okay, so tell us how you cook the rice. So I just use um, a rice cooker. Uh -huh. um, I like it because it's over here. I don't have to keep an eye on it. Right. It is kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. And then once it's done, it just stays in the warmer so I can cook dinner for the rest of my family. Yeah, yeah. How much do you want? A whole wide? I'll probably need the plate. Oh, yeah, look at that. And that's the thing too, is it cooks it perfectly every time. And I also use that to steam broccoli, to steam, uh -huh. you know, whatever it is that I'm trying to do that day. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's your wadja rice. There you go. And you can see the rice is nice and fluffy. Yep. It's not broken in the middle. Oh, you brought some stock? Oh yeah, we're going to have a little bit of stock here. So chicken stock is one of those things. Yeah, it's Actually, one it's a cooking things. one. That's not chicken. No, it's chicken. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's look, chicken. it says on the label and everything. Look at that. Yeah. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> so, chicken cool. stock is great because it is universal. You can use it for seafood, you can use it yep. for chicken, you can use it for beef, you can use it for lamb. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have a taste of chicken per se, right? No, it's, it's, it's kind of like butter or, <laughs> you know, it's a. <laughs> I'm using a little taste of it in here. Pot here to loosen that rice so it's on the bottom. Perfect. Like that. Alright, so I'm just gonna set this right on here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Easy peasy. Get this out of the way. Love it. Alright, and then just to top it off, we're just going to put our. The cap hairs. Capers. Oh man. There you go. Wow. If you want, you can put a little bit on here. There it is there. Asparagus goes great with butter and lemons. Well, so, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, yeah and actually, you uh, know, the lemon goes pretty well with asparagus, even though asparagus is fairly bitter in the taste. Yeah, no, but some, for some reason, out, yeah. Yeah, lemon and asparagus go well together. So wow. Super simple, super easy. Um, mm -hmm. I think even kids would like it. <laughs> I don't know about the asparagus, but I know that eat that. Yeah, I. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I can get my kids to eat lots of vegetables. And yeah. Have butter on it. Right, right. <laughs> All right, well, we had a lot of fun today, and now we get to do probably the best part, yeah. which is try the food. I know, it's pretty awesome. So listen, I'm cutting into this fish right here, and I'll tell you what, it's really shiny, and look at that. Oh, man. Well, dig in, girl. All right, let's do this. All right, so if you'd like to see the recipe for this, you're going to go to 38.tv, and you're going to click on a link that says Cooking in the Kitchen with Stephanie. <laughs> All right, so, um, and give us some suggestions here, uh, you know, post below or wherever you find us, um, you know, make sure and ask 
maybe uh, Stephanie, you know what you'd like to see on the show. How about that? Oh, I would love that. Anything you guys want to see, let me know. Yum. You got any ideas for uh, next week's show? I was thinking maybe a steak. Mmm. <laughs> That sounds good. What kind? Like a ribeye or? Probably a ribeye has the most mm -hmm. flavor. Yeah. Definitely. Well, you know what fat stands for, right? Flavor and taste. Oh my goodness, I've never heard that. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this All is right. delicious. This is amazing. So, I'm sure you don't want to <laughs> watch us eat on camera as well. We're going to sit, sit and have some lunch and have a great time. We'll see you next time on Cooking in the Kitchen with... Chef Stephanie. Mm-hmm.